Well, hello, everyone. Let's get this thing started. We're excited to have you with us today. I'm Jeff Sullivan, Director of Community and Content at StarTech.com. And actually, I'm at headquarters today. Uh, this background, some of you may recognize from our YouTube videos, because I decided to take this webinar in the studio. Uh, normally, I'm down in Austin, Texas, but this week, I'm in London, Ontario. Um, I'd like to thank you for spending your valuable time with us for today's topic, choosing the right cables for performance in UHD environments. In fact, uh, that YouTube channel, we should provide a link. I think we just did in the chat. If you, you want to go there and check out some of our videos. Okay, first up, how about I introduce or share the experts that are with me today. Lynn, please tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Lynn Elliott. Um, I'm Director of Category Management here at StarTech.com. And my team researches and analyzes data. So we're searching for insights uh, into the needs and wants of the IT pro. And then we use those insights along with the product team to build our product assortments and position them for the market. Great. Thanks for being with us today, Lynn. Daryl, how about yourself? Hey, everyone. My name is Daryl Hunt. I'm a digital merchandising manager, and I work on Lynn's team. And uh, my job is to make sure that uh, our products are easy to find, that the listings have all the information you need to make an easy buying decision, and that they're uh, in stock and available when and where you want to buy them. Excellent. Thank you. All right. As we kick things off, I'd like to take us all through a couple of housekeeping items. There are a few engagement feedback points along the way in this webinar, and we'd love to hear from you. For example, we're gonna have some polls that kind of keep it interesting, and then I'll share the results of those polls on screen. We also have the opportunity for live question and answer at the end of the broadcast. So if you submit your questions into the Q&A box, I will ask them of Lynn and Daryl at the end of this webinar. So stay tuned and get your questions answered. Also, there's a survey at the end of this webinar, and your feedback is super important. In fact, today's topic, UHD cables, came straight out of the survey of the last webinar a quarter ago. So please uh, respond to that survey. We'll also have replays available. So if you miss anything or want to come back and, and uh, watch this again, it'll be available as soon as the broadcast is over at the same link that you joined us here today on. And if you want to go further on any of these topics or others, we have community.startech.com with an extensive knowledge base, but also the ability to connect with us directly, either through the forums or through our email, community at startech.com. Okay. So before we get into this topic, I want to kind of level set, do some table setting. Ultra high definition, or what we're going to be referring to as UHD for today's broadcast, is primarily concerning 4K resolutions and up. So 5K, 6K, 8K, and this could be at your workstation, meeting rooms, classrooms, digital signage. You know, it's used on a lot of things, including displays, TVs, and monitors. UHD, you know, it delivers a clear image, lots more pixels, lots more colors. Those pixels and the color depth of, or those more pixels and the color depth of each pixel can produce more colors and higher bit depth. Uh, it's a mouthful. In addition to the sharper sharpness, UHD also delivers HDR, high dynamic range, which gives you better contrast, brighter images, and you know, screens today, they also have the ability to display more shades of black, detail in the shadows, more shades of white, and details and highlights than ever before. And so also in this webinar, we're considering higher refresh applications, for example, 4K at 120 hertz, which is extremely important in areas like creative work. And we will get into real world applications uh, as part of our agenda today. So really what I'm trying to say is basically at the end of the day, more information than ever is being sent over those cables. So Lynn, that kind of takes us to the first question. Why are businesses moving from 1080p to UHD environments? What's the what's the benefit? Well, we are seeing 4K becoming a more standard in the boardroom. So whether or not it's wowing clients because you're showing them the latest 4K brand video, um, but even collaborative work, right? Looking at you know giant 
worksheets or, or Gantt charts. Um, we're seeing it more often. Um, also, today's employees, they're working eight hours a day and they're staring at the screen, right? So they're getting a lot of eye strain and mental fatigue and high resolution helps that. Um, just by having a better clarity on the screen, it helps you know, reduce that negative impact um, that we're getting on the eyes. Um, you know, even though our eyes can't see the difference, you know, after eight hours a day, many people get that eye strain and the high refresh rates help with that because the more often your screen is refreshing, it's smoothing up the graphics and it's reducing that negative impact um, on your eyes. Um, a 20, 120 Hertz um, is also becoming more common as we are seeing video cards, monitors, um, and cables being able to handle the bandwidth of those higher refresh rates. Um, and high dynamic range, we see that mostly with creative work. You'll see it with photographers, graphic designers, and video production to bring out those more vibrant images. Excellent, thank you. So why can't we use those older cables for performance in these UHD environments that we're talking about today? Well, it's all about choosing the right tool for the job. Right. The last thing you want is, you know, you have the time and expense of sending someone down, trying to fix the solution. And at the end of the day, it comes down to the $10 cable. Um, you really want to choose a cable that you're just 100% confident that it meets the specifications of the ultra high definition 4K or 8K. Um, it will save you time and money in the long run. Um, and with ultra high def definition devices, they can be picky. Um, and with older technologies, the cables are supporting 1080p60 or 4K30, but the new cables, DP1.2 or 1.4 and um, HDMI 2.1, they have to deal with a huge amount of data and bandwidth. Um, and many protocols that get passed along in the signals, such as HDR um, and display stream compression, et cetera. So you don't want the cable to be the weakest link in your solution. Like every new feature, every upgrade, you're increasing bandwidth. So you wanna make sure that you have a cable to support that. Um, and along with that higher bandwidth comes a better um, constructed cable that can meet the demands of the ultra high definition, um, such as industry certifications, uh, shielding, construction, connectors, and durability. Um, things to consider when purchasing the cable is, is it certified? FESA or HDMI.org HDMI certified. Um, the build quality, you want better connectors, um, more flexible materials. You just want a lower chance of failure rates um, and confidence that it's gonna support the advertised um, bandwidth that you need. Yeah, I think that's a that's really good, really good point, Lynn. And, and I know when, sometimes when you're doing a large deployment, um, it, it may be tempting to kind of maybe save some time um, and, and maybe leave some of the cables that are that are already there kind of in, in place. But when you think about it, um, most of us have asset tags uh, on our on our high value items, but you may not know exactly how long those cables have been at that workstation, uh, whether they've been bent at uh, you know 120 degrees for for five years, jammed up against a wall or something. So that could become the weakest link, and and even just replacing a couple of cable during a deployment can probably save you a potential uh, expensive service call or, or, or delay in productivity or, or technical support time. So it, it's good to consider creating cables as part of the deployment plan when you're doing that. For sure. You know, it's interesting when we were asking our sales team to share the webinar with their customers, we got some feedback from uh, one of those customers that said that they had this exact situation where it ended up being the cable that was the culprit. And, it, you know, so it's very, very relevant conversation. And Daryl, you recently wrote a blog on this very subject, which we'll, we'll put a link to. Malcolm's going to help us out and post that here in just a second. But it went through the bin of shame, which I thought was, was hilarious when, when you first mentioned it. Uh, but that's, you know, we all have it. We all have that box of old technology, right, that, you know, we're, Maybe an extra cable came with a monitor, or we, you know, we moved that HDMI cable into that box, and it's an excellent write-up. You guys should check that out, and the link is is there. We've got a related poll that we're going to kick off right now. Let's see who's who else has that that bin of shame. So let me go ahead and start the poll. Just got a couple of quick questions there. Uh, do you? You know, audience have that box barrel, you know, cardboard box container with the massive tangle of old cables and old technology. 
I, I found a Microsoft Zoom in mind when we started talking about this. So I've, I've definitely got some old products. You know, you do. It's okay. Be honest. <laughs> Okay, uh, looks like I'll give I'll give you folks another minute to answer that question, and then do a quick reminder uh, Q and A at the end of this broadcast. So uh, post your questions in the Q and A spot, and I will make sure and ask Daryl and Lynn whatever it is you want to know about our cables or our technology. Okay, looks like the majority of people have responded. I'm going to go ahead and end. I think we kind of, I'll share the results, put them up on the screen. I think we knew how this was going to go. Dale, yeah, we're right. You're right. We all do. Uh, the number one response, 87% of our online audience today said, of course, they've got that bin of shame box. Um, and well, everything you have a problem is the first step to fixing it. So that's, that's good. I'm there you go. Well, 3% said they would never admit. Um, it's all right. That's all right. Go ahead and stop sharing and then we'll continue on. So speaking of old boxes, old cables, you know, what are the things we should be looking for? Uh, you know, what what type of problems are we are we going to see? Those support situations that might develop if you are using old cables, or what are the warning signs, Lynn? Um, so blank screens. So often a cable will work or it won't work, right? It'll be simple as that. Um, also, you might get flickering or flashing um, of this on the screen and audio dropouts or you might see performance issues. Um, so reduced resolution or slower refresh rates as well. Yeah, I think we can we can all identify with that. I've, you know, personally had a brand new Roku on a on a high def TV and the TV kept rebooting at weird times. Turns out it was the old cable I was using. And I, you know, being here, you think I'd know better. All right, Daryl, how about we get into the categories uh, before we get into the real world applications, what are the categories of display cables we should be thinking about or know about? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, um, obviously Thunderbolt um, 3 and 4, uh, USB-C, they're, they're becoming really common. It's kind of the, the one cable that does everything, but we're seeing a lot of displays um, and, and video adapters using those technologies right now. Uh, HDMI, probably the most common AV format. So most TVs will use HDMI. Um, a lot of laptops too have that as a video out, um, assuming you might want to display it to a, any kind of boardroom situation. Uh, and DisplayPort, um, probably the most common uh, video out for uh, in the computer side uh, of the shop. And, and sort of in all cases, you know, you want to consider, I know Lynn mentioned certifications, that's, that's really, really important. That's different than kind of works with or capable of, um, because all these certifications uh, are, are by licensed third-party agents. So it means that something has been tested to meet that standard, not just kind of uh, the manufacturer saying it saying it will. So that's important to look for that. Um, also, different cables may have different features. You know, for example, you know, uh, USB-C. You know, if you want that 10 gigabit transfer speed, make sure that that's there. You want to you know support a certain amount of um, power delivery charging. You want to look for that HDMI. If you're going to be using HD, you know, HDR10 and eARC and those kind of uh, those kinds of uh, those kinds of features, just make sure that the cable will support. Them. Good point. Okay, let's get into the weeds a bit. Let's start talking about real world scenarios where uh, an IT pro might be deploying solutions. They've got their companies moving forward with some of these UHD displays that we've been talking about. Um, let's go with the example one, Lynn. Uh, what's important to keep in mind? when choosing cables for like a high traffic boardroom environment? Um, so when we think about boardrooms, there's probably two things um, that you'll be thinking about is durability of the cable and probably and the distances as well that you may have to cross. So when you think about a high usage area like a boardroom, people are connecting and disconnecting that cable multiple times in the day. People fidget, they may pick up the cable, they may bend the cable while they're talking. So, you know, those cables take a lot of abuse. Um, so we test our cables. So we test our cables up to 10,000 insertion rates because we know they'll be heavily used. And for uh, we, we do bend um, cycles. So we test to 600 plus bend cycles at 120 degrees, right? So we just wanna make sure that they can handle that durability. Um, also boardrooms come in all different sizes. Um, so for smaller boardrooms under 15 feet, you can get away with a passive cable. Um, but as you can get to longer lengths, um, you're probably going to want a, a, an active cable. You're going to need an active cable, um, 15 feet um, length or higher. And the difference between um, a passive and active cable is active cables are built with signal boosters. 
um, to ensure compatibility and video signal reliability at those long distances. Um, we even have a unique HDMI bus powered cable electric optical amplifier boost uh, video signal over longer distances um, up to 100 uh, feet, but that um, ensures you need no external supply uh, needed um, in order to cross those lengths. Makes sense, makes sense. And I know from my training, you got to make sure you you plug that active cable on the on the right side. You know, it's a it's a one it's one directional, correct? correct. Unidirectional. direction. Yeah. All right. And I, you know, I think we can also all identify with that conference room or boardroom setup where you walk in and the cables broke or torn or barely hanging on and don't move your laptop or you'll lose a display type of situation. So yeah, making sure they're rugged, durable, certified, less support calls in the future. Okay, speaking of environments where things can't fail, maybe maybe you're responsible in the uh, you know the you know the mission critical uh, space control center for Artemis One, and you can't have your display fail. What do we need to know about this environment, Daryl? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a case of don't let the, the simple stuff uh, trip you up. You can have a great cable, uh, but it will do you zero good if it's not connected to the display you need it connected to, right? So um, some of the older technologies like uh, VGA and DVI, you know, had the, you know, had the screw connectors on the side to help uh, help them fit snugly. Uh, we're seeing that now with, with some of our cables. We do have the option now to actually have um, screw down um, USB-C cables um, that are being supported by more devices now. So that once you hook it up, you can make sure it's going to stay in place. Um, same thing with DisplayPort cables. There are latching versions that will lock into place and, and be far more difficult to, to have come out accidentally. And I know we're talking about, um, you know, sort of mission critical, but I, I would also just say um, any place where it's, it's difficult to get at, um, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is, is having someone standing on a chair reaching behind. Uh, you know, a TV or, or trying to fish something through a wall when you're trying to get a presentation done or, or at the last minute when something like that's happening or, you know, there's a self-serve kiosk that has to be partially disassembled. You don't want something simple like a cable coming loose from just wear and tear and and, and people vibration and stuff like that causing that kind of problem because it's, it's, it's expensive potentially to fix, to send someone out to do it, uh, to troubleshoot and do all that. So this is another kind of, kind of case of um, this is something really simple and you know, it's just the connector locking down, but it can actually save uh, quite a bit of grief uh, and, and downtime down the road. Makes sense. Continuing on, what about things to keep in mind for those super high resolution, resolution situations, 5K, 6K, 8K, graphic designers, programmers, brain surgeons, what you know, others that might be needing those high-end displays. What do we need to be thinking about for those? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, wherever possible, keep the keep the cable as short as possible without having to be so short that you're you're having to to bend it or or, or twist it or not have any slack on the cable that because that can over time that's that's not good for cable performance. Um, having a cable that's too long can result in, in you know in, in uh, interference that you might not want either. Um, so just keep in mind when you start pushing stuff out to you know 5K, 6K, you know, and certainly 8K. You're pushing the cable to the limit, so you just want to make sure that you're, you know, you've got a, a cable that's certified. We've talked about that, um, but also that um, you know, you're considering any other features you want, like you're using one of the a newer monitor with power delivery. Make sure the cable is going to be rated to to handle the power delivery required for that uh, for that monitor. Um, so make sure you're just considering all the specs, and, and and again, just be you know, make sure that you're you've got kind of the right specs for the cable, including the length, just to kind of make sure it's kind of in that Goldilocks zone. So that um, you've you've got just long enough without being too long. I like I like the Goldilocks zone. Okay, uh, number four. Uh, you know, technology is always changing. How can conference rooms or these you know display environments? What can you do to kind of future proof when it comes to cables? Well, the great thing about HDMI cables is that they're backwards compatible, meaning that you can connect older devices to the newer cables. So this allows you to future-proof your solution, even if the high resolution is not needed today, um, especially if cables are you know, run under the, the floor or in the walls, it may be expensive to upgrade later on. Um, and remember, um, any part of the solution as you change, any feature you add, any upgrade, it adds bandwidth. 
So just specking the high performance cables from the start will just make sure that your solution works into the future and you don't have the time and expense of having to upgrade your cables um, you know, midway through. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, when we on the marketing side of things were going to uh, Dell Technologies World last year, I guess, well, I guess it was this year, this past event, uh, we had to buy, we had to purchase a display and it didn't make any sense to do anything other than buy an 8K. You know, we didn't know what we we're going to use in the future. Kind of had a lot of the things that we're talking about today. You know, we're in a an environment that's moving around a lot. We need that higher resolution and yeah, cables were were a large part of the conversation too. Okay, and that takes us to the end of the, the main content here, but now we're going to get into uh, the Q&A here in just a minute. See, we've got a couple of questions. You still have time while I do this poll. Do you have any, you know, want to know about um, what we're talking about today? Post it in the Q&A section. Let me go ahead and launch the poll. This poll is about what's the highest resolution monitor that you're currently deploying? If I were allowed to answer, I would put 8K on there because we just took it to Dell World. Um, all right, I see the, the responses coming in. Got a couple of questions. All right, I'll give that another second to run. So we have a few things. So the options were 1080p, 1440p, 4K, 5K, 6K, and 8K. All right, looks like the majority of people have responded. I'll go ahead in the poll. One last opportunity to get your questions in. And we'll start answer, asking Lynn and Daryl here in just a second. Put the results up. Oh, that was kind of interesting. I didn't... I, I assumed a lot of people would be running 4K, but nobody's got 6K. It looks like a couple on 5K, a few on 8K, but the majority on 4K. All right. I wonder if we did the same broadcast in another year or two, how, how different these results would look. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And we'll go ahead and move into the Q and A. Looks like we've got a, a couple of questions here. Go ahead and scroll down. All right. Question one, and this one's going to be for you, Daryl. And this is related to that one-way direction cable that I was talking about earlier. Are the signal amplified cables marked as to the input and output ends for that one-way direction? They are absolutely so. There's no guesswork involved. Uh, so any of our cables that have a that are directional are always marked. All right, cool. Let's see, we got another uh, question in there. Okay, uh, what is the best? Lynn, this one looks like for you. What is the best HDMI cable for an 8K display? Um, so you'll just want to make sure that it is um, an ultra high speed cable. So HDMI 2.1. And you'll also want to make sure that it's certified by HDMI.org. Um, and I believe certified ultra high speed is what you're looking for um, on the specs. Okay, excellent. Daryl, um, how can I connect a Thunderbolt 4 laptop to a 4K monitor with this display port? So you have a couple of different choices. Um, so we have a we have kind of a two different lines of um, USB-C um, DisplayPort adapters. So you're plugging in either um, a dongle on the on the one side and then plugging the DisplayPort cable into that. Um, so it's the USB-C USB-C side into the into the laptop and then hooking the cable in. But we also and I really like these ones. Um, there's also kind of the all-in-one slimline cables that basically have the video adapter built one in. So it's one cable. Um, so there's just, there's only kind of one point of failure and everything. So if you're looking for a really clean setup, um, we have those in lots of different lengths. Um, and that's probably the cleanest option to connect a laptop um, to a display port. Display port screen. I actually had a, a similar challenge at home. Okay, so uh, next question. Can I, and I think we, I think we kind of covered this. Can I connect a 4K TV to a laptop that's 20 foot away using 
HDMI. Daryl, how about you? Uh, so at 20 feet, you're you're probably going to the sort of the high end of, of where we'd want to go. Um, so probably 15 feet is kind of a good solid maximum. Um, you can go a little bit longer um, with a good quality cable and a good quality source. Um, so depending on the circumstance, you could probably use it. I would probably consider using um, uh, one of our active uh, active cables to go to go do that. You'll get more consistent performance, um, and especially if you if you're in a situation where you might have um, using different laptops plugging it in, and then the source might not be always at the same quality, you're going to get a guaranteed a much better performance over time, and you're not going to have to worry about it. So I would probably recommend going with an active cable at that. You could use a passive one, but um, active is probably the better choice. All right, cool. Um, here's another one, Lynn. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to word this carefully. <laughs> how do you, or how do your cables compare with certifications from other brands that are out there? Um, I think it's just making sure that the cables that you purchase are actually certified by the right uh, certification bodies, right? Um, Daryl had mentioned works with is different from an actual certification. Um, so when you're bidding um, USB-C and Thunderbolt cables, make sure they are USB, um, USB IF certified or Thunderbolt certified. If you're getting DP cables, look to make sure they're FESA certified for resolution. Um, and if you're getting an HDMI 2.1 cable, make sure it's certified by HDMI.org um, and that's certified ultra high speed uh, designation. All right, good questions. All right, got another. Um, Daryl, looks like this one's gonna be for you. Um, Oh, I, I see. To connect a PC to an AV receiver, and it's HDMI 1.4A, what 25-foot cable would you use or recommend? Yeah, so again, at 25 feet, that's kind of, we're kind of past the, the maximum we want to use for, um, for a passive cable. So I'd recommend using one of our um, one of our active cables. So that would be like um, the RH2A dash 10m dash hdmi dash cable um or something else in that series that would be uh, that would go to that distance for you but probably at, at 25 feet um look at an active cable for that for sure and hope everybody took notes on that on that one <laughs> but we we can uh, actually we have a link that we just put in the chat we actually stood up um this past week a ultra high definition landing page with you know blogs and articles and content where you can go um, for more information on that. Um, and let's see, we have any more? Oh, there's one more question, and then we're going to cut it here. Uh, does an active HDMI and USB cable affect the audio and video quality? And how about we throw that one to Daryl? Yeah, so I mean... In terms of quality, what you won't get is is audio dropouts or something like that. Um, the quality, the actual quality of the sound will be determined if it's using um, Atmos or something else being processed on the other end. So it's um, in this particular case, you can ensure that you'll get a clean signal to where it's going um, in terms of whether it supports some of the extended sound features that you may want. That depends on the device sending it and the device receiving it, whether they both support uh, what you're trying to do. So the quality benefit here would be uh, on an active cable is that you won't get any dropouts um, or or distortion in, in terms of processing errors from, from being part of that. So. Excellent. Thank you, Daryl. I know there's a, another question or two in, in the queue, but we've got to, we've got to cut it here at the half hour. Uh, we, we do have a community, community.startech.com where you can ask questions like those and uh, if if we if uh, you've registered and opted in, we might just send you that answer directly. But if not, uh, post them on our community. And if you uh, first, let me actually thank you, Lynn and Daryl, both for your time today. Appreciate you you being here with us and dropping your knowledge on our audience. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, and of course, all of you out there, we do appreciate you being here. And if you have other questions or thoughts or concerns. You know, drop in on the community. And also, we've got that survey coming at you here in just a few minutes. 
So thank you for your valuable time and we'll see you next time.